let's take a look at a fundamental web page. This web page has pretty much everything you need to do your basic or fundamental web page. There's a title, meaning a larger font. There's some gibberish or content. There's a link, a Euro link to another web page. There's a centered graphic, and then there's a graphic which is, in this case, floating to the left. It could equally float to the right. This is pretty much it. Um, there's other things that one can do with menus and different kinds of drop-down boxes and whatnot and what have you. But for a simple web page, this is it. You want a title or a way to make larger eye-catching displays. You want your basic content. You want to have active links and you want to have images. Let's take a look at what that looks like in the raw HTML. I know there's a lot of very excellent HTML editing programs out there. I don't use them. I don't recommend using them. If you stumble across one that you like, by all means use it. I have various reasons for not liking them and it's a personal preference, definitely one of my own. So if you share it and work with either Notepad or in this case uh, Pico, welcome aboard. Looking at the raw HTML, we can see at the top, at the very very top, is this doc type definition. You don't need to understand this. I definitely recommend that you look it up and study it at some point. In the beginning, just copy it and paste it. What it does is it tells the browser what kind of page you want it to render as. Long, long ago, browsers used to render only one type of page, or two, depending. It could render a text page and an HTML page. Now pages can be everything from XML to XHTML to HTML to data sets that have layout definitions associated with them. Sky's the limit. If you want your browser to know what you mean by your page, tell it. And this is how you tell it, is with this doc type definition. So use it. At the top of the page, we have an opening HTML tag, and at the bottom of the page, we have a closing HTML tag. That wraps all of your pages. Inside of that, you have two main areas. You have your head area, or header area, and then you have the body of your page. In the header, you typically have non-displayed elements, things like the title, which puts the title at the top of your browser. You also, in this case, if we're using uh, cascading style sheets, I'm recommending that you link to an external sheet. I'm assuming you're going to have more than one page. And if you have more than one page, you do not want to edit style in each page separately. Hence, have an external style sheet. So that's your link to the external style sheet. Just copy, paste, modify. Here I've copied that. I've pasted it. Now I'm going to modify it to point to my other style sheet. I recommend doing that. Copy, paste, modify. That way I don't force myself to have to understand what exactly is this, what happens if I come in here and I use that kind of slash, what happens. Don't worry about it. Copy, paste, and then modify the bit that you rec recognize. 
my style I recognize that as my style sheet not because of the my style but because that's what I called it now moving down to the body we have a beginning body tag and an ending tag noticing a pattern here with beginning and ending tags that's true for almost everything there's a few exceptions such as image but for the most part you'll have a beginning and an ending tag inside the body area we have the body of your web page in this case we have a title fundamental web page and it's in between this h1 and slash h1 that just means title it means more than that and you can study and figure out what else it means but for the moment just think of it as your header title then we have a paragraph one with all of the gibberish here we see the gibberish repeated it has a beginning paragraph tag and an ending paragraph tag now we have our links the paragraph tag it's the same one we used up here. The ending paragraph tag, same one we used over there to end it. The only thing that dif is different is this stuff in the middle, this stuff right here. A href equals quote a URL, a page, a web page address, end quote, this other little brackety thing then what you're calling the link what you want people to see that's highlighted for them to click on goes right there then we have this slash a thing another ending tag I put a second URL so that I could have one that goes to a page that doesn't exist hence I have not visited it and then a page that I've already visited so that we can see the difference in colors. Everyone sooner or later wants to put a graphic on their web page. There are three basic places that people want to put graphics. Smack dab in the middle, over to the left, over to the right. There may be variations thereof. Let's start with the fundamentals by just getting something in the middle to the left or to the right. The way that I do that in CSS is I have a class, you'll see what, how it works later, defined as center me. So I put the graphic that I want to center inside a paragraph that has this class. It's not an ID, but it's the its class name. Then of course at the end I have to have my slash p. If I want to float to the left or the right I can do it slightly different. Here I have my paragraph tag starting. Okay, There's my ending paragraph tag. In addition I have an image and I gave this image a class of L float, so it floats to the left. I've could have given it a class called R float, in which case it would float to the right. Now, is L float magical and right float magical? I made up those names. I'll show you now. We'll look at the style sheet. It does magic, but the names themselves are not magical. This is my fundamental style sheet.